Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive Hobbycast, a really quick topic, uh, kind of a get in and get out topic here. We are going to be discussing five games that I want to either get to the table soon or get back to the table soon. Two of these games are games that I have never played before, but I have wanted to learn for quite some time, and both of them are intimidating to me. But I need to get over that hurdle, that mental hurdle, and just kind of a plug away and work diligently to get the games learned and played because I think I'm going to enjoy them, or I at least think they're going to offer some interesting things for me to discuss with you. So looking forward to that. Three of the games are games that I have played before. Two of them I like. One of the, one of them I love. Uh, one of those I liked quite a bit, but I think I'm going to like it more upon a revisit. And finally, one of them is a game that I have reviewed before and I was pretty negative on it, but I want to reevaluate the game to see if my opinion has changed on it at all. So uh, let's get right to the list now to keep this episode nice and short. Okay, so number one is Bloodborne from Cool Mini or Not or Simon or Mon, whatever they want to be called now. Um, Bloodborne is a game that I have reviewed before and I was pretty negative on the game largely due to its timing mechanism, the timer mechanism, which I don't think really added anything to the game except for an arbitrary game over state that was not in any way um, a good reflection of the video game. Uh, I talked a little bit about this in my review, how it seems like they were trying to solve a problem just by simply adapting a video game that doesn't really have a game over screen. In Bloodborne, there is no game over until the player just decides to stop playing, but they needed to have some kind of way for the players in the board game to lose. And so they kind of like patched that over with a timer and I did not like it at all. However, I've been thinking about the game a lot. I've been thinking about the various modes of the various uh, campaigns and some of the things that are in the game that I did like, such as like the combat and just kind of the moment to moment feel of the game I thought was quite good. So I'm going to reevaluate the game, reapproach it, see if I can approach the game more on its terms and maybe enjoy it more and try to think of that timer in a different way. So excited to get Bloodborne back to the table. Uh, next up is the first of two games that I have not played yet. And both of these games are somewhat difficult to learn. The first one being kind of notoriously one of the most difficult games. And that is Robinson Crusoe. I think I'm going to like Robinson Crusoe quite a bit once I can get over that huge hurdle of getting the game learned and learning how to play the game well. Yeah, I know it's a very difficult game to learn and to play well. So those are two things that I struggle with because I, I've said many times before, I'm not the best board gamer, uh, quite the opposite uh, actually. But the game seems to offer up a ton of adventure. I love all the different scenarios and just the different ways that you can play the game. It sounds fascinating. It looks beautiful on the table. Uh, I have set it up a couple times just to see what it looks like. And it looks beautiful on the table. I, I, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. But just, yeah, the game itself is very intimidating. So I am hoping to get it learned. I'm going to take some time, maybe devote an entire week of the Dungeon Dive to Robinson Crusoe. And number three is a very similar game in that same kind of bucket, a game that I think looks great, um, that I think has a lot to offer. But one that is a little more um, forward with its mechanisms than games that I usually play. And that is Nemo's War from Victory Point Games. Uh, Nemo's War looks great. It looks like it offers up a great sense of adventure, but it's very crunchy, lots of numbers. It's very kind of mechanical. And it is another game that is quite difficult to learn, but I do like the fact that it is made from the ground up for solo play. Like Robinson Crusoe, it does have those various kinds of scenarios with different win conditions. And I think it's going to be a game that 
I will find interesting, even if I don't love, but it's a game that for some reason I really want to love. I'm not sure what it is. It might just be the look. It might be the nautical uh, theming, but there's something about Nemo's more that is Nemo's war that is attracting me to it. Uh, a lot stronger than many other games for some reason but for some reason i have also not taken the time to learn it i think it's just that kind of that mental hurdle uh that challenge that i have to get over um number four is a game that i have reviewed before i liked but didn't love but i've uh, recently received a bunch of expansion material for it and now i think i am going to like it a lot more and that is iron helm I did recently do the video for the new kind of uh, box expansion, the Iron Chest expansion, and that adds a lot of interesting elements to the game and things that I think that maybe the game was missing, just some, some, some cool little thematic touches and some new scenarios to go through. I love Jason Glover's art, of course, and I'm excited to see the new art on my table as I am playing it. Um, and I, I'm going to, to give the game, kind of reevaluate the game, see if I like it more, see if I have changed, if my opinion on the game has changed at all and see how the new stuff fits in with the game and what kind of new exciting things the newer expansions add. And finally is a really big game, one of the biggest boxes on my uh, on my shelf. It is a, one of the few games that comes in one of those giant coffin sized boxes and that is Fortune and Glory uh, from Flying Frog Productions. Uh, we're still waiting on news for the, uh, the the supposed expansions that are finished for Fortune and Glory, but for some reason, Flying Frog just doesn't want to do anything except for Shadows of Brimstone right now, or right now for like the last five years. I want them desperately to release some new stuff for Fortune and Glory. Not that the game needs it, because there's already with the two expansions, there's already a lot in Fortune and Glory, but I just want to see what they have in store for the game. The reason I want to get back this back to the table is because I do like it so much and I have been kind of jonesing for the kind of adventure that Fortune and Glory gives. It has such a great pulp feel. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know if I have any other game that really does give me that pulp adventure feel. I do feel like I am playing a board game version of a great globe trotting Indiana Jones style adventure. And I've been craving something like that. And so I think it's time for me to get fortune and glory back to the table and see if it still offers me what I remember the game offering me. It has been quite a while since I have played it. It is a game in my top 50. And I just want to make sure that it really does belong in my top 50 because sometimes you you know, sometimes I revisit games and I'm like, oh man, my memory of this game is a lot more fond than my, uh, or, <laughs> you know, I like the game a lot more in my mind than I do in reality. And I'm hoping that's not the case. I don't think that's going to be the case with Fortune and Glory, although it is quite fiddly and there are a ton of little tiny things to forget in the game. And over the years, my love for games that are kind of, um, complex in that way, complex in the fiddliness in all of the little minutia. My, my fondness for those games has dwindled a little bit. So I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to uh, love the game as much as I did before. But yeah, so those are just five games that I want to either get to the table or get back to the table. And those games are Bloodborne, Robinson Crusoe, Nemo's War, Iron Helm, and Fortune and Glory. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dungeon Dive Hobbycast, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.